football and racism, two things that go hand in hand in Europe. Expected to blow up this month because the Euros are around the corner. It's one of the biggest football tournaments in the world. Germany is hosting this time, but they're in the news for all the wrong reasons. Germany's state TV is making a documentary. It talks about diversity in the national football team. As part of the story, a poll was conducted. Around 1,300 people were surveyed and guess what they were asked? Do you want more white players in the football team? Don't check your calendar, it's still 2024, but people are still asking about skin color. And what about the response? 21% residents said yes. Imagine that, a fifth of Germany's population wants more white players in their team. What explains this? We looked at Germany's national side. We also looked at their probable 11. Six out of the 11 players are white. Then you have players of African descent. You also have players of Turkish descent, much like Germany's demography. So what more do the people want? The national team has hit out at this poll. The first to criticize was Joshua Kimmich. He is a World Cup winner with Germany. He called, out the, sur called the survey absolutely racist. Now the coach has also joined in. He has asked the people of Germany to wake up. It's good the way it is, and we're playing a European championship for everyone in the country, and everyone who can play top-class football is invited to be a national team player and give their all for their country. And that's what we're doing. And I hope I never have to read anything about such crappy polls again. The poll reveals how divided Germany is. Overall, 21% people want more white players. But among far-right supporters, the number is much higher. Almost 47% of them want more white players. So the issue is not just the poll. The issue is also the racist response. It goes back to Germany's relaxed border policy. You've seen two examples of that. The first in 2015, when Germany welcomed more than 1 million refugees. Most of them were from Syria. Then again in 2022, when Germany welcomed 1.2 million refugees, this time from Ukraine. These moves sent out a clear message to the world that Germany welcomes outsiders. Just look at the population split. In 2011, 92% of their population was German. Basically white European, 92% of the population. Now it's 85%. You have around 2% Turkish people, 1.4% Ukrainian, and more than 1% Syrian. And this is commendable. It shows that Germany did not expel migrants. But not expelling is a low bar. It's also a question of how you treat them. I'll give you an example from last year. Germany was playing in the under-21 Euro Championship. They drew a match against Israel. Two German players missed their penalties in that match, both of African descent. One of them summed it up best. This is what he said. When we win, we are all Germans. If we lose, then we are the blacks. And the monkey comments come out. It's true. Another player painted a more grim picture. He played two World Cups for Germany, yet he was always called the N-word, apparently more than 1,000 times. And it's not just Germany. France experienced something similar. In 2018, they had 12 players of African descent in their squad, so people called them an African team. But this statement ignores a basic fact that around 15% of France's population is non-white. England has, as, as always, took it up several notches. They played the Euro final in 2021, but they lost in the penalties. Three England players missed their strikes. All three were non-white players. You can imagine what happened next. A deluge of racist attacks and comments. Eventually, the prime minister had to wade in. Now, all of these examples stem from the same problem, a reluctance to accept the new reality. France is not an all-white country anymore, neither is Germany or Britain, so their sports teams will also look different. They will look multicultural. Instead of accepting that, some people unleash hatred. I guess it has once again exposed European nations. They've spent decades lecturing others on diversity and tolerance. Easy to say when your society is not diverse. But look at their response when the shoe is on the other foot. The question is, will anyone criticize the mighty Europeans? Confused by the barrage of numbers? Deafened by the chorus of experts? Disoriented by the flying graphics? Don't worry, we've got you covered. 
On First Post, we're keeping things simple. The most important seats, the high-profile candidates, and the most lucid analysis. As India counts its votes, tune in to First Post. Catch our live coverage on June 4th on all our platforms. Also, the special edition of Vantage.